Hello and welcome to Budget Buzz. Less than two weeks to go for Finance Minister Arun Jaitley's big budget to be presented and a new tax row has erupted once again between telecom giant Vodafone and the government. Can the Modi government promise a transparent, predictable tax regime to foreign investors? That and much more coming up on the show. Joining me on the show today, Saurabh Gupta from the special Make in India venue where clearly the government is trying to woo all those foreign investors. And of course, we will continue our very special focus on what the budget can do to uplift rural India. Joining us in our special series on rural distress, Uma Sudhir from Karnataka and Tejas Mehta from Maharashtra. We'll talk all about all that and much more in just a bit. But first up, the big Vodafone tax dispute. At a time when Prime Minister Narendra Modi is promising investors a transparent and business-friendly environment with streamlined taxes, Vodafone says it has been slapped with a fresh notice asking to pay up 14,200 crores in taxes. This despite the fact that the case with the government is already under international arbitration. But more importantly, what has clearly got the telecom giant really upset is that the government has warned that its assets will be seized if it doesn't pay up. Uh, clearly remember, the telecom giant is one of the largest corporate investors in India and it has complained in a very strongly worded statement saying there's a complete disconnect between the government and the tax department. Also pointing out that its bill has arrived at a time when the Prime Minister is wooing foreign companies to invest in India without the fear of regressive taxes. Let's go across straight to my colleague Saurabh Gupta who's actually been tracking that very important uh, Make in India week. Uh, Saurabh, we can see you standing right there in Mumbai with the logo, Make in India logo in your backdrop. Perhaps one message that the Narendra Modi government is sending out to all those foreign investors who are gathered here for the event is that India will have a transparent, stable uh, tax regime, a business-friendly environment. But here comes a tax notice that is sent to Vodafone yet again, even though the case is under arbitration. Vodafone is naturally very upset. What are some of the big investors there saying? Well, Shweta, what I can tell you is uh, what some of them have been saying off the record at least is that this lion that you see, which is the logo of the Make in India uh, campaign that the Prime Minister has launched, is not roaring as loudly as it was yesterday. Since the day this was inaugurated, the Prime Minister sent a message saying that yes, retrospective taxation is not something that this government is looking at or even considering. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley reiterated that point when he spoke here at the Make in India event and various other people have been saying that this is something good that this government has done, that this government is not in favour of retrospective taxation. But then of course comes this notice that seems to have upset a lot of people amongst them, many of whom are also engaged in hard selling of India as the ideal destination for foreign direct investment, something that this Make in India campaign this Make in India summit is also doing. But with this notice, it sends the exactly opposite message that while there are people, the top echelons of government, the Prime Minister, the Finance Minister are all saying something, the tax department seems to be doing something that's completely contrary to what they've been saying. Now, especially since the matter is under international arbitration, many are viewing this as a disconnect like Vodafone and the sentiment seems to be echoing here at the Make in India summit as well. All right, Saurabh, clearly, and the opposition is uh, obviously asking the one question that it was asked when it was in power, is this not tax terrorism? Is that this is legitimate tax collection. That is what the finance minister will say. Because when it comes to the opposite to the government, when we were in power, it was tax terrorism. When they are in power, it's legitimate tax collection. That's what the finance minister will say. So will finance minister do anything to soothe the nerves of all those investors who are asking these questions? That remains a big question. And of course, the other big thing to watch out for will be if the finance minister will address the issue of rising bad loans in the budget and the stress that's being faced by India's banking sector. The Supreme Court today directed the Reserve Bank of India to submit a list of defaulters who owe more than 500 crore rupees to public sector banks. The top court wants the list of defaulters pertaining to the last five years to be handed over 
within the next six weeks. The directive coming at a time when there is heightened concern over the sharp spike in bad loans in public sector banks that has led many lenders to post big losses in the December quarter. And of course, today, once again, SBI Chief Arundhati Bhattacharya warned that uh, the bad loans crisis will continue and is something which will not go away so easily. The RBI set a March 2017 deadline for cleanup of bad loans in the Indian banking sector, which is estimated at $100 billion. Today, the Supreme Court implemented the Reserve Bank in this petition and has asked the Reserve Bank to file an affidavit containing information about uh, the companies which are in defaults of more than 500 crores, including those cases who were in default but whose loans have been restructured. And clearly one thing that has uh helped Finance Minister Arun Jaitley more than anything else has been falling crude oil prices. Windfall gains uh, for India as oil prices have collapsed from the highs of $140 a barrel a few years ago to less than $30 a barrel. But finally, oil producers have decided to act and bolster the falling prices in a tentative cooperation among oil producers, including Saudi Arabia, Russia, Qatar and Venezuela. A plan has been announced to freeze oil output at current levels, a move intended to help bolster oil prices. The plan reflects the troubled state of the oil industry. With prices slipping to new lows, major oil producers, particularly in the organization of, the, of petroleum exporting countries, which is OPEC, are trying to calm the markets. Uh, but it's, what's notable is that Saudi Arabia and Russia, otherwise geopolitical rivals, are presenting a united front now on oil. All right, time now to bring you the big voice of the day on Budget Buzz. World Bank Chief Economist and Cornell Professor Kaushik Basu has written a book called An Economist in the Real World, The Art of Policy Making in India. And I spoke to him earlier asking about what he thinks the budget will contain and what is his advice for Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. Remember, Kaushik Basu is also the Chief Economic Advisor in India. Uh, Dr. Basu, two weeks or less re remaining for the budget, what many are calling a make or break budget. What according to you can Arun Jaitley do to make sure that this is a real game changer at a time when the global economy is still recovering? Uh, I have to begin by saying that I don't follow the nitty gritties of the budget the way I used to do three years ago where I do every number that is going into the budget. And now because I watch a variety of countries, about 100 countries across the world, so my information is not quite as detailed. However, the important thing to keep in mind in a budget like this, if I may give a general piece of advice, is that the budget is an instrument for all those things that I was just now talking about. So yes, you do want to be fiscally responsible. You want the budget deficit to be small and tidy. However, that cannot be an obsession. The global situation now is very, very difficult. While we are putting India's growth forecast at 7.8%, if you look at the global landscape, there are dangers all around. Latin America is doing poorly. Brazil's growth is negative. Japan, we've just got information, has once again gone into negative growth. So, and Russia is in negative growth massively. So in this difficult terrain, you may need to give a little bit of extra fiscal stimulus to get India going. So while fiscal discipline is important, we must not make an obsession of that. It's important, Dr. Basu, that you're actually making a case for fiscal stimulus. This at a time when your successor, Raghuram Rajan, who's now the RBI governor, has actually sent out a warning uh, against a spending spree to spur economic growth, almost telling the government that it would be a bad idea to move away from the path of fiscal discipline. He's also cited the example of Brazil, saying it's an economy that followed that route and is troubled now. So in some sense, do you disagree with what he has said? No, actually, I don't disagree at all. Um, a, a spending spree is usually a bad idea and giving government the space to do that. It's very easy to have the spree in domains which are not critical to growth. What I'm stressing is something very similar. The fiscal discipline, as I said, is extremely important. You want to keep that in mind. At the same time, when the global situation turns as difficult as it has done right now, you don't want that to be an obsession. But when you are deciding that, okay, I'm going to relax this a little bit given the special, special situation today, everything depends on where is it that you are taking liberties. 
And so here again, you have to keep in mind, you do not want to just give out handouts to become more popular, but you have to give out the right space to investment so that infrastructural investment empowers business and enterprise and health and education so ordinary people are more productive and can do more. So the fiscal stimulus that can be given has to be given in a very measured way, keeping in mind that you do want to keep even the medium term, long term fiscal discipline very much in sight. Right, Dr. Kaushik Basu, the other big debate obviously around the budget is whether the government should actually incentivize private sector with tax breaks or on the other hand, do away with what many are calling corporate subsidies. What according to you is the need of the hour? Shweta, I, on this, I, if I knew the numbers better, I would be able to give, uh, talk directly to this question. But what I can point out in general, the good rule about all taxation is to have it as uniform as possible not have special breaks and then work with that so that everyone is playing on a level playing field. But that is a general advice that I would give on this. All right, Dr. Basu, thanks so much for sparing time to talk to us and many congratulations on your new book. Thank you very much, Shweta.